All right, this is a guide on how to use micro lensing or Bastion X-ray in runs. I have two other videos that are loaded with information if you want to understand this. Uh, but this is a video on what you're looking for and what to do in a real run. So first of all, you want to increase your entity render distance to 500%. Uh, it'll look different on, if you're on a vanilla client, uh, but this is a vanilla feature. Um, you technically don't need it this high at 500%. Um, and also if you're using sodium, which is not actually required for this tech, um, you need to update it with the link in the description. Um, and if you're using sodium, you don't need to do this on vanilla, uh, you need to disable entity culling. Um, it'll lower your FPS, but it's necessary. So again, we want to look at E to know what number of entities are in our field of view. So it's this first number before the slash at E at the top left here. So that's the number of entities that are within our current field of view, uh, including through the walls. And the second number is the total number of entities in all of the loaded chunks right now. Uh, we also have a couple more numbers that Amazon has been using. I'll leave a link to his Twitch as his methods have refined runs a lot. Um, so the first new number that we've been looking at is M. So M is, uh, the total non-permanent hostile mobs in current loaded chunks. And the second number that we look at is C, which is right next to the M here. Uh, C is creatures, uh, and in our scenario, the creatures in the world are striders. So C is going to be a different number depending on your world. Um, striders spawn differently depending on every world. They don't seem to have their own mob cap at all. Um, sometimes this number will be very low, sometimes it'll be very high, but the M should always be somewhere around 70. So if we compare M plus C against the total number of entities in the world, uh, we get a difference of 30. And 30 is roughly the amount of piglins that are in a bastion. So again, M is only the number of non-permanent hostile mobs. Um, piglins in a bastion are permanent, which means that they'll kind of exist outside of M, uh, but they'll still add to the total number of entities in the world. So since there's a difference of 30, it means there's one bastion currently in loaded chunks. This is helpful for resetting as we can determine if there are any bastions at all within our loaded chunks, or we can determine if there are four bastions in loaded chunks. We need one minimum, obviously, and we need at least one area to not have one so that we can have a fortress. So this is super handy for knowing off spawn whether or not the run is playable. For world record, Dowski and Davey have limited their render distance to 16, meaning they won't be able to detect any bastions further away than 256 blocks, which is a decent cutoff for a bastion being too far away for us to bother running to. Um, if a bastion's further than 250 blocks, it's probably too far away for a world record pace run. So we can just reset off spawn as we want a bastion closer than that. Now that we know how many bastions there are in our world, we want to know where they are. So we look around for a spike. There's a spike over here. Uh, again, we're looking at the first entity number. So right now, looking over here, it's only around 30. But if I look over here, it spikes up to, you know, 65, 67 over here. So now we can lower our FOV. 
to know more precisely where it is and then we can run that way so it looks like the spike starts at around here so if i'm looking over here the first entity number is at around 11 drops down to two over here but as i look over here it spikes up to around 25 so we can just fly through here And there's our bastion. So here's another world. If we add up our M and add up our C, we get 110. And if we look at our total number of entities, we've got 170. So that's a difference of 60. 60 divided by 2 is two sets of 30, obviously. So there's two bastions in this world. So now that we know we've got two bastions in our world, let's look for them. So I look over here, spikes, it drops all the way down to 6. I look over here, it goes up to 40. Over here, it goes all the way up to 80 though. So there's, there's one bastion somewhere around here. Now if I look over here, there's also a spike of 80 around here. There's two spikes of 80. And obviously in the middle of them, it seems to be spiking to 100, but... It's because we know that there's two bastions um, and they're both roughly within this area. So now that I've found two bastions, I want to find out which one is closer to me so that I go to the closer bastion rather than the further bastion. So I'll drop my FOV down, look at exactly where the spike is, spikes to... It's like about 57 over here. So what I'll do is uh, move my mouse away from the spike until it drops down to about 20. So here we go. The angle here is negative seven. It's after the facing. My current angle is negative seven. So I'll note that down and then look back at the spike. Look at the right of the spike until it says 20 again. So we've got 66. So that's a difference of 73. And now if I look at this other bastion, spikes at 45 over here. So I'll look over to the left until it's 20. 20 on the entity counter. So we've got negative 86 here at the angle. Uh, and then look back at the spike. Look to the right of the spike until it says 20. We've got negative 25. So a difference of 60. Um... The larger the difference of the angles, the closer the bastion should be. So this was a difference of 73, this was a difference of 60, we should go to the one with a difference of 73. Also, you want to halve your, differ your difference. So 73 divided by 2 is, you know, somewhere around 35. Add 35 to this number or subtract 35 from this number. So we'll just do uh, 30. If I go 30 here, here's a bastion. It's at roughly negative 80, 210. If we go back to spawn. So again, we check our difference and halve it. The difference was 60. So we can just add 30 to this number or subtract 30 from the other number. So we get 55 we should travel at. And here's our bastion. It's at roughly 250, 150. So clearly a fair bit further away since it had a smaller angle difference. This bastion was further away. Now, something you should do before you go to any bastion is you should take note of which quadrants have bastions and which quadrants don't have bastions. Because then when we're leaving our bastion, we can run to a quadrant without a bastion, um, as it will most likely have a fortress, so that we don't get two bastions in a row. I strongly suggest you do this off spawn, as often if you're leaving a bastion, checking for non-bastion quadrants, you'll look back towards spawn, and your spawn will have a lot of mobs, uh, which may trick you into thinking a bastion is there when it's not. So this bastion over here was in positive positive, this bastion over here was in negative positive, which means 
um, that negative negative and positive negative will likely have fortresses in them. Another thing you should check when choosing which bastion to go to through walls is your C level, which is just above the E here. So the first number of the C level is basically the number of chunks containing air in your field of view, which is helpful for knowing basically how much area there is for you to run around at to get to your bastion. So if I drop my FOV, looking at this bastion over here, my sea level is 106, whereas if I look at this other bastion over here, it's only around 100, uh, which suggests that there'd be more air heading towards this bastion, which wasn't the case in this situation, but if the sea level is very low, then you're probably staring at a wall. Like over here, if I drop my FOV, sea level is only four, which means there will be li very little air over here. But if I look over here, where it was quite open, um, it went up to 97. Uh, something I want to warn you about is that um, the moderators have banned any use of calculators at all, including a calculator on your desk. Um, so to avoid getting your run rejected, you shouldn't use any form of calculator at all. Again, I want to mention that this is a vanilla feature that does not need any mods at all. But if you're using Sodium, then you need to update it with the link below, as old Sodium versions are bugged and have a far lower entity render distance. 